Drawing from the drop means there's a high percentage chance you're gonna get hurt. Sometimes there's no choice. Hi friends, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, as always, John Correa. I got sent this one a million times. Best I can find from the news stories, this one's out of Ecuador. Henry Holsters is one of the few holster makers I trust to make a quality appendix carry holster that meets all the requirements of a holster. Check them out at a link in the description. You see this guy walking by, that's actually our second robber walking by on his phone. You're gonna see a couple walk in here and they are going to be our intended victims. Now, I have put a link in the news story uh, to a news story in the description, and I want you to check that out because there's a bunch of people saying it's from a bunch of different places, and also that this is a robbery, but I, I, I don't know that it is. This couple is our intended victims, particularly this guy in the hat who is a police officer. Now, this guy in the blue, that is gonna be our primary robber. Now, watch the couple who has walked into this place here as the dudes have kind of cased them here, and you're gonna see our robber is going to kind of come back by and see him. Now, notice that our, uh, our off-duty officer is paying attention to his world. See this guy come on back. Now, watch as he does. He's gonna button hook around and pull his gun and come and attack. But as he does, our officer is gonna get his gun out, try to kind of bat that guy's gun out of the way, and is gonna shoot him multiple times and then kick his gun out of the way. Notice the second robber tries to chamber his gun and fouls it, and so when his buddy starts losing the fight, he bugs out. And so now our officer here was actually injured in this fight as well. He was shot in the arm um, and in like up into his armpit, and he did make it through this. And our perp did not as far as that news story says, and we get to think about some significant lessons out of this gunfight. Holy smokes, man. Glad that guy made it out okay. If you want to support the work we do here at Active Self Protection, would you consider becoming a patron member? Link is in the description. We have a silver patron member and gold patron members. Thank you to everyone who helps me pay the staff. Man, ad stuff here on YouTube has gotten super wonky, so I appreciate every bit of support you guys are offering. Now, there's some differences here when we're talking about a targeted violence versus if we are talking about an armed robbery. I I'm going to say this one is probably targeted violence because that they focused on him in particular. And, and down there in Ecuador, easy to get sideways with organized crime, with you know drug gangs, stuff like that. And especially as a police officer, then end up with a price out on your head or something like that. And if you notice, I think he did a lot of things right here. And so he ended up living. Let's think about them here in this particular case. These guys are casing him. But the big things I noticed, number one, he's carrying his gun. Good for him on that. Number two, he is paying attention in his world. Just carrying a gun doesn't make you any safer. Got to see what's going on around you. And he's doing a good job of being casual and yet still seeing what's going on around him. And again, that idea that says, hey, I see something that's a little bit out of place and now I'm going to take some steps in order to do something very important. Because especially if he's seen this guy already, now this guy's following me again. I just saw him a little while ago. Now you got to think about stuff. Now as that guy kind of goes away and he's going to kind of go to our left, you know, and, and get behind the door, you're going to see here our good guy kind of take a look at him like, what is that guy doing? Which tells me he is 100% paying attention to him. If you're having those kinds of problems, maybe the only thing that I would think about here is you notice that he's bladed off in such a way to that guy that he would have a very hard time getting his gun out quickly if he needed to. So if you're going into that condition orange, I, I would say you know getting yourself into a better place where you can go shooter ready, stand by, would be very wise. Now he gets there very quickly because we're gonna see the guy here come right back around to him and start to draw his gun. We talk about this on the channel all the time, about having the standards of concealed carry. A one second draw to first shot, 1.5 second, two second draw to first shot, and those are going to come into play here in big ways. Now, we say the 1.0 is the expert standard, a 1.5 is a professional standard, a 2.0 is the national standard of a concealed carrier, and we're gonna see here exactly why that is and why I tell you working towards a faster draw and ability to get a good hit is critical because if he had a one second draw to first shot from this his go signal he starts moving a quarter second later and if he had a 1.0 draw to first shot this is what he gets to see now that guy with a gun up in his face is not amazing but if he gets his first shot on this guy it's a much smaller chance that he ends up shot like he does in this particular instance so when we talk about the expert standard, which if you go over to Active Self Protection Extra, you can see you know, Natalie, our range monkey, who just started getting one second draws to first shot. And it does take a little bit of work, but it's not as much work as you know, sometimes some people make it out to be. Most people can get there with just a little bit of work. That's the look you get. If instead 1.5 second draw to first shot, he would have had this look 
at 1.5. Now he is moving and getting off the X instead. And I think sometimes movement is a good thing. I will note though, you notice he has moved and gotten off the X and notice that our perp is moving with him. So I'm not saying it's wrong to move and get off the X, but it may not get you the kind of results that you want. It's not like you drop a ninja smoke bomb and move. Unfortunately, what happens here is our defender has about a 2.2 second draw to first shot. So by the time he gets his gun out and his shot off, he has given our perp an awful lot of time. Now, I think if you look on this one, that that actually, I think hit the perp and went through him because you can see the little mark on the wall behind our perp to the left of him on our screen. But I think it actually went through. If you look a little later, he's got some, some exit wounds on his back. So my guess is, is that he's loading here with full metal jackets that just went through and through this guy. And there's a reason that we recommend using jacketed hollow points because they tend not to do this kind of thing. So gets a hit, gotta keep going though because this guy still needs to be shot some more. And I will note as well that he just kind of pushed that guy's gun out of the way. And this is where it looks like I think our perp got a hit on our good guy. So again, he didn't get a shot on him and towards him until a good bit into this gunfight, which is why being faster with your own is important. I know people say there's no timers in a gunfight, but that's hogwash. There's absolutely a timer. You just don't know what the part time is until you're, the gunfight actually happens. So, so please, more faster, more better to get in there. Now, our dude is going to get a good number of hits here, and, and he's doing so from a, an odd position for sure. He's trying to get down and out of his line of sight, but get good hits on him. Remember, best way here, get this guy down is your best bet. And, and he ends up doing that here. This is the hit that actually did something, an anatomically significant hit. First guy to get an anatomically significant hit wins. The other part of this, of course, is you can't count on luck, but luck counts. Because our second bad guy tries to chamber his gun, and you can see it in his gun there, that his gun is just barely out of battery. If this guy's gun gets into battery, I think our this video is entirely different. I think our, our defender here ends up getting murked by that guy in all likelihood, or at least badly wounded by him. And so, man, is there anything he could have done about that? I don't think so. I think by that point, he's fully engaged in the first guy and he's just going to be at a radical disadvantage. But I don't know, sometimes Jesus looks down from heaven and just says, nah, not today, dude, and, and gives you know a pass to his people. So good for him on that. You can't count on that stuff, but it does count when it happens. And so I'm glad his gun mouthed out. Now, notice here, our defender is going to get our bad guy's gun the heck out of the way, but notice he is bleeding badly. This is why I tell you to keep your first aid kit on your person, because for you, even if you win a gunfight, you might be badly injured. We see it more often than we like to admit. And so my big strong recommendation here is make sure you've got a stout medical kit on your person and that you know how to use it. If you buy one from Mountain Man Medical, who's one of our sponsors at Aspects, they have a course, an online course that you can go through to at least get some modicum until you can get into an in-person class and get some in-person instruction. And also all the proceeds from those medical kits go to good charities. At least the, the portion that comes to Ask Mountain Man's got to make their money and that's not a bad thing at all. But our proceeds go to a charity right now that, that helps out first responders with trauma and helps them not take that trauma home. So get a medical kit, make sure you know how to use it. Get that draw to first shot as good as you can. More than that even, pay attention and know what your ghost signals are to cover your ASP.